has been a long time now. The moment has come. It is time to use everything that we learned from the previous levels to make the separating axis theorem. One of the most popular collision detection algorithm for physics and game design. The theorem says that if there is a gap between any of these pairs of axes that got created from the two convex shapes, like the boxes, then they are not colliding. So let's, again, let's make it simple. I'm just going to drop this item box onto the stage and let's dissect this. Let's apply the separating axis theorem and break it down to see how this scene works. The separating axis theorem can be described into four different phases or step. And I'll do my best to explain each step very easily. And I'm not going to discuss about the whole entire code. And if you want to navigate on your own, or if you got lost, I'll put the link to GitHub down below in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Um, so all I'm going to say, like in the previous levels that I, uh, in the previous tutorials, that I just swap the collision detection method. Before this used to be the axis align bounding box. Now I just have it to be called check separating axis theorem detection. So check SAT detection. And that's pretty much about it. So let's take a look into it. So step number one of the separating axis theorem is getting the normals of both boxes. So I supply the function with the two uh, boxes and I made two vector two arrays for each box. And I have a, a helper function to help me get the normals of those boxes. And you can learn more about it from this tutorial or from this level. A uh, quick run through is that I have a, a for loop that cycles through all the points on the box that, got, that was given to this function. And then what I do is that I grab the two points and then I subtract the both points in the Y direction and the X direction and those get inverted inside this temporary this vector 2 variable and then for this extra if statement this is for what I think is because the way SFML have their positive y direction they have it facing downwards as opposed to what we usually see it upwards and and coordinate grids and stuff but yeah that's what I think the reason why I need to have that there and then um, and then normalize, we want to scale the vector down to have the magnitude of one. The reason why is because we're going to be using this vector later in the algorithm and we don't want to have like crazy numbers like three, four, five, six. We want to have it simple between zero and one. And then I supply that into the array that I passed in. And step number two is pretty simple. It's getting the box points. So I have I mean, I should have for looped this, but you know, I just want to be verbose and explicit, you know, no tricks or anything. I'm just getting the four points of this box. Uh, thanks to F SFML, I can get the points where they are in in the world. So I'm using the get transform dot transform point, and then I, then I supplied like the point index to figure out where they are in space. So given step one and two are about gathering stuff, I guess you can do is you can have it swap so you can get the points first or and then the normals or you can do like what I did here and get the normals first and then the points it's up to you so step number three is a big part of this this is a part where we combine the points and the normals together and I have a function called project onto axis that will handle that so project onto axis this is the this is the cool part this is where you can shoot the vertices out into space in the direction of where the normal that you supplied it in. So a quick note before I continue on, I created a small struct called axis and it's pretty, it's pretty simple. It takes in two floats, a min and a max projection point. So imagine you draw a line, right? And you have, you know, the positive X going to the right. Well, the max projection is the one that's the furthest to the right, the furthest to the positive, in the positive direction. And then the min is the one that's shooting off, the one that's the furthest in the negative direction. So, and that's about it. And in the, pro the project onto axis, what we're just doing is we set the min and, project min and max projection points. We give them like, you know, a default value of like what the first one uh, returns. So. We have something to test with when we go through all the points. So we go, we go through all the points and we shoot it out into space to make this axis. And we try to determine 
if this is the one that's the furthest in the negative direction or the furthest in the max or in the the furthest in the positive direction uh, using that analogy so the further so if it's greater than the current max projection point then we want to override it and same thing for min the minimum projection and then i have a temporary axis i supply the min and max projection points that we figured out from after we do the for loop and we just assign it to this temporary axis variable and then i just return it and that's why you have that's why i have like all this like axis a b c d equal to this uh, function and then the fourth part is when we actually check to see if those pair of axes are colliding with each other or i mean overlapping with each other i should say so if all the pairs of axes are overlapping each other then that means that they are colliding if there is one single pair of axes like let's say this one they are not colliding with they're not overlapping each other then that means that both of the boxes are not colliding with each other however there are some quick remarks or special ideas or tricks you should know about or notes i don't know what you want to call it but so number one this only works for two convex shapes it's not like a concave shape where it would have sides going more into the shape like an item from this game like the the boomerang or um, when you collect moons from mario odyssey they have that uh, curve that goes into the shape more Trying to use that separating axis theorem on those kind of shapes may result in some weird or incorrect collision detection. A quick fix for handling something like this or something like that is to give them two circle colliders. Um, and there might be, or there might be some like special um, algorithm that can handle uh, concave shapes. Um, all right, but this is about separating axis theorem. So convex shapes for now. Another thing about it is that it is expensive to perform. So there are a lot of things that go into this algorithm and it gets performed every frame. We don't want to know where the normals and the vertices are all the time or where the axes are get created all the time, every frame. Imagine you have a game that runs 60 frames per second. You're doing all this math like 60 times per second or this poor computer. And one way, this might probably be a common way to not use this function too much, is to use the axis align bounding box method first. It is inaccurate, but it can tell us roughly that the two objects are close to each other or are colliding. Then if they do get close enough to each other, then we can use the separating axis theorem as a secondary and a more detailed uh, check to see if, if they are colliding with each other. But all right, game set and match. That is the separating axis theorem. I hope this helped you understand more or gave you an idea about how physics engines detect collision and two physics, if that's even a verb or uh, I don't know. Um, don't forget to subscribe to see more tutorials like this and I will see you in the next level. Bye.